Good morning. Uh, one announcement, and that is that following our worship this morning, we'll have a brief presentation from me, from our senior warden, Stuart Davis, and from our treasurer, Deb Gandy, in lieu of the annual meeting. Remember that by canon, we must hold the annual meeting in person. Therefore, due to the pandemic, we'll have to postpone the annual meeting until sometime in the fall, but we did think it was important that we just give you a snapshot of where we are and actions that your vestry is taking. So I invite you uh, to stay for another 15 minutes once we're done worshiping so that we all can be updated on the state of the parish. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth His praise, to hear His holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship Him, with penitent and obedient hearts, let us confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against You, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. 
Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with the Pascha Nostrum. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who are being saved. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Canticle 8. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has, been, has he hurtled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them into safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them. On the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. 
the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Word of the Lord. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning's gospel lesson is one that is familiar to all of us, the figure of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. I was a little taken aback this week when a colleague shared that she really doesn't like that image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. I didn't get a chance to really uh, investigate what was behind that, but it did get me thinking about the fact that I think I have some of those same ambivalent feelings, meaning that the image of the little lamb draped around Jesus' shoulders, the one lost and the 99 sound, becomes very kind of, um, well, almost cloying, maudlin. It, 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 just, it just can be kind of, um, well, just, just doesn't always strike a chord with me. But the more that I thought about that, I wonder if that really has to do with the fact that I really don't want to be that one lost sheep. I want to be part of the 99, the ones who already have it, the ones who are doing just fine, thank you very much. And of course, that's a jarring reality that all of us are the lost sheep. All of us are in desperate need of God's hand reaching down, embracing us in that unconditional love that the world promises but cannot deliver. It also occurred to me that one of the reasons that we may not always find the image of the Good Shepherd to be readily accessible is that that is such a different world than the one that we live in in 21st century America. Remember that a sheepfold is a three-sided enclosure that has a gate in one of the walls. The fourth side of the sheepfold would be the entrance to the home. Now, the home is not one that we would Imagine, in all likelihood, uh, and certainly in many cases, it would be the entrance to a cave. People have lived in caves in all cultures and in all epochs of history because caves provide both safety and security, but they also provide a natural way to stay cool in the summer heat and to remain warm when it gets cold in the winter, the background temperature of the earth remains constant. So you have to imagine this sheepfold, probably a stone wall on three sides with a gate. And then here's the thing, not every home would have a sheepfold. So different shepherds would bring their flocks in at night. Thus the image of Jesus saying, if the sheep do not know the shepherd's voice, they will not follow him, begins to make sense. So the sheep come in at night where they're kept safe from predators. 
That's why Jesus speaks about the fact that anyone who does not come in through the gate is a thief or a robber. Obviously, anyone scaling a wall is there for no good purpose. The interesting piece about this story is that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, also says that he himself is the gate of the sheepfold. He's both shepherd and the very means by which the sheep come in and the sheep go out. So in the morning, a shepherd comes and calls for his sheep. Those that belong to him recognize his voice, and thus they go out and find pasture for the day. And then at the close of the day, they all return and find safety and shelter from the terrors of the night. Now, that image of sheepfold and then sheep going out into the pasture is an image that the church has understood um, to make sense of itself. What I mean by that is that church is supposed to be the sheepfold. Church is supposed to be the community of people who come and are sheltered by God's mercy and protection. And then in the morning, each of us has to go out into the world to live our lives, to represent Christ to a world in need of a word of hope. Now, the thing is this. I think the reason that Jesus insists that he's also the gate of the sheepfold, as well as the shepherd, is that we do not go out. We cannot go out in our own strength. We can only go out through the gate who is Christ himself. And when we go out, we're both shepherded by Jesus, protected by Jesus, and at the same time, we are representing Jesus. We are presenting Jesus to the world. In a real sense, that really is the Christian life, this back and forth, this ebb and flow. We come to church hopefully for lots of good reasons, but we come precisely and fundamentally so that we can praise God and give thanks to God for what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And then in the safety of that sheepfold, we're fed, we're nurtured, we're strengthened so that we can go back out into the world where our work has to take place. The man who presented me for ordination so many years ago uh, said to me, only half-jokingly, he said, you know, you'll need to remember, Andrew, that because we get to work in the church, we work with people who self-select to come and gather every Sunday. So they at least purport to be Christian, but all of the laity in the parish have to go back out into the world, into a world that is decidedly not Christian and in some cases is actively hostile to Christianity. The work is done out in the world. It's not done within the three, four walls of the sheepfold. And it's not done despite our best efforts and our best intentions. It's done only through the gate of Jesus Christ. It's only that as Jesus sustains us, leads us, and as we can risk going out on our own, knowing that we're not really out on our own because God is still there, that then you and I can really be about the work of God, changing people's hearts to know that there is another way. So this, this basic Christian rhythm is essential. And when it's disrupted by a pandemic, its absence is felt ever more acutely, not just the inability to receive the Eucharist, but the inability to embrace one another with the love of Christ, to literally throw our arms around each other and, and rejoice. Or is it? Is the real fact about the sheepfold finally and fundamentally that it's always there for us? And so that you and I really can risk going out into the world. And here's the final thing, of course. What is it that we find when we do that? Abundant life. As you and I live our lives, not freed from struggle, not freed from failure, not freed from doubt, but as you and I go through the gate of Jesus Christ, 
and know that he is there as we engage our lives. We know that the power of God can work in and through us in ways that we cannot even imagine. And then we know we can come back and be strengthened and renewed and get ready to go out again. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your Holy Church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 4, found on page 388 of the prayer book. Your petitions and thanksgivings are invited in the silences. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Responding, hear our prayer. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, 
and Susan and Jennifer, our bishops. For the unity of the church, its mission and ministry, for our sister parish in London, St. Martin's Acton, for our companion parish in Honduras, San Lucas, St. Mary's Sekonge, Tanzania, and St. Andrew's in Debwe, Tanzania, and the Episcopal Church of the Sudan and South Sudan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. For Donald, our president, and Ralph, our governor, for peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for all of the workers who are risking their lives to care for all the people in the world during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. In our parish, we pray for Malcolm Marsh, Styron Douthat, Angie Shaffron, Jane Kachulis, Dan Donahue, Norris Keeler, Elspeth Delabar, Betty Taylor, Ali Tejado Gutierrez, Joan Turkis, Kevin Bayruther, and Jim Cook. For those traveling, for those called to work and serve overseas, for those killed or wounded and their families, for those taken hostage, and all those targeted for violence throughout the world, especially all those persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of your servants towards the attainment of everlasting salvation, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, they may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is alive, let Christians sing, His cross turns empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring, His love in death shall never die. Christ is alive, no longer bound to distant peace in Palestine. Not throned above, remotely high, on 
untouched or moved by human pains, but daily in the midst of life, our Savior with the Father reigns. In every insult, rift, and woe, where color, scorn, or wealth divide, He suffers still. Christ is alive, His Spirit burns through this and every future age, till all creation lives and learns His joy, His justice, His love and praise. Alleluia, alleluia, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>